What's good? It's Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. And this is not, not another damn podcast. Another damn podcast. Did it by our damn right, So 261, kid. And yeah, 261. Yeah, so before we go any further, because we got a lot to get into today. So get the good stuff out of the way. Um, how was your weekend? Uh, very busy, but good. Um, I <laughs> I got so much needed outdoor time. I got to go out yesterday. I had lunch with a friend, Shao Janice. We had lunch yesterday, and then we took a long walk. <laughs> I remember Janice, the homie. Yeah. So very nice to just oh, y'all get took out. A long while. Y'all had conversation, verbal elation, stimulation. <laughs> we did. I actually did a real love it. So, yeah. Uh, y'all talked about Surah 31. <laughs> 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 no, it's just, it just feels good just being, you know, some sense of normalcy, like I said, because like we've been under for two years. So just try to get back out, seeing your friends just. Doing normal stuff like you got, man. You just want to be around people, <laughs> man. <laughs> <Fuck that. laughs> man. <laughs> so, why is it that people still want us to stay inside and not do anything in the summertime, man? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> All my Xers and old millennials will get that one. It's like probably like who the hell is the guy? Like. <laughs> Hey, everybody else. <laughs> Even a lot of people our age probably don't remember that song or him and shit. Yeah. <laughs> 1994 called. <laughs> Shout out Crazy Howard McGee. I remember he used to play that on his show on GCI back in the day. <laughs> That's my <laughs> on the crazy show. <laughs> That's why I remember. No, the guy referenced in 2022. I never, things I thought I'd never say. So so guy guy crazy Howard McGee on the show. <laughs> <laughs> 2022. I love it though. I love it. You gotta you gotta laugh sometimes. You gotta laugh sometimes. I definitely had a good day on Saturday. Got some guns and golf in. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the gun range got a little firing in, a little pow pow, pew pew action, as they say. Pow pow. Pew, 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 pew. You know, I'm trying to get my um, you know, I want to get good. The only way to get guns is going to be good, good at shooting guns is to shoot your guns. It's like, yeah. A lot of people just buy them and then like put them in a the drawer. Like, um, so then when the bad guy comes, they think they're going to be ready. Like, no, nah, <laughs> you ain't fired that motherfucker. You're not ready. <laughs> yeah. You're a terrible shot. You got, you got to yeah. practice. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about practice, not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. <laughs> it was a good day to golf because I did see some people out when I was driving out, uh, Earlier yesterday, I did see some golfers out there. So like, I saw some out today on the way back. Cause I had um, some business to take care of this morning. Mm-hmm. As we record this on Sunday, so I saw some golfers. Like good weekend for golf. <laughs> and yeah, then, and you get a little bit more in because it's a holiday weekend. Yeah, yeah. holiday weekend, holiday Una- unofficial <laughs> kickoff of summer. That's what I call mm-hmm. Memorial Day, even though technically summer begins what June twentieth. It's like, yeah, 21st, yeah. something like that, 20th or 21st? 20th, 21st, yeah. Technically, like, um, that's the uh, uh, actual kickoff, but I mean, we Memorial Day is when summer really starts. So that's what we say. Pretty <laughs> much because the kids are winding down. The kids only got, like, two weeks left to school. A lot of kids are out the suburban ones. Are well, thinking, I, some of the kids are out even, I'm you know. Private and suburban schools are already finished. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know CPS finishes coming up. I know, yeah. Yeah, they got, like, two more weeks left at CPS, so they're – they're pretty excited. Like, okay, like, you know, like we're we're winding down. So like the last couple of weeks is just gonna be fun. Like they're gonna be doing lighthearted things, like, like they're gonna do like a, a field trip at my dark school. They're gonna do some other stuff. They're gonna do like activities and just keep the kids just engaged, you know, because first year being back after a remote year last year, after they had to do a whole year remote, basically. And now it's like we get our first year of full in-person instruction pretty much fortunately like i said we've been doing this a long time and um we're not new at these segues and this is the most mm-hmm. awkward natural segue we've had to do we talked it about is friends, we talked about school kids about school yeah so that aspect, about- I said it, we we don't plan this but 
Yeah. We just, this is what we do for, this is what we do. We've been doing this five years now. This is actually our anniversary. Our anniversary. Our, our, it's our five year anniversary. Anniversary. Hey. It actually is. So. Victoria um, be no secret at the end of the day. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout but before, like I said, we had to like smile first because, you know, this story, um, obviously. Y'all, y'all, of course, the whole world has to know. You're about not you. under a rock. You've all you're just taxes right. by now. Yeah, the whole world has to know about the shooting. Um, was it 19 students, two adults, something like that? Yeah. I think that's the um the death toll. I don't know how many injuries. There's got to be like dozens more of injuries, but I know the official death toll is um 19 dead students, two dead teachers. That's the official death toll. Yeah. It happened. Um, was that Wednesday? Uh, what day was that? You have the date. I forget the like. It's this all runs together after a while. Was, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. Or was it Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. It might have been Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday because they only had two days left of school because they were supposed to be getting out that Thursday. I think it was Tuesday and they were supposed to, like the kids only had two days left until summer vacation. Like they literally were like on their last week of school. Like it's like we're about you know, to get out. For when kids be excited, it's like, yeah, like last day of school. Woo-hoo-hoo. You remember that? <laughs> the kids have just done. Their awards, about you, like, yeah, because you like school, but like me, I definitely would be counting down to the last day. <laughs> <laughs> I like school, I like summer too because I got to go to camp and I got to do stuff like that, so yeah, so I got to do fun activities. But, um, Salvador Rolando Ramos is like, I just want to put the guy's name out there just one time. We don't know, um, we don't make these assholes famous, even though he's dead and shit. Yeah, but yeah, Salvador Ramos is the fucking shooter's name. 18 years and once old. again, an 18 year old child that's somebody's baby. An 18 year old child went to an elementary school mm-hmm. and shot and killed fourth graders. Yeah, fourth, fourth, fourth graders. Mm-hmm. 10 years old, these kids are 10. How at 18 years old do you have like, like at 18 years old, I was concerned about, oh, I'm about to go to U of I, I'm about to go to college. Oh, I just went to prom. That's what I was thinking about when I was 18. I was thinking about the normal 18 year old stuff. I don't. Yeah, like around this time, depending on when when his birthday was, um. He should be um yeah this should be he should have been finishing up school around this yeah time. graduation I don't, think, I don't think he was in school like from the best of my knowledge but um this is around the time where like yeah you should be like getting the other graduation plans together and all that he was winding yeah. down like I said when I was graduate like during this time my senior year like we had just went to prom they had collected our books we were prepared for graduation I already knew I was going to be going uh early to school because I was going to a scholarship program for my college. Mm-hmm. Like right after I graduate, literally like right after I graduated. So I was excited. I was like, yeah, brighter days are coming. You know, I'm I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going to the next chapter of college. That's where my mind was when I was 18. Mm-hmm. I have friends now who have kids graduating and, and family graduating. Um, I was looking for employment. You know, and, in Cause, um, and they're like, I was, yay, I was, graduation. I, taking, I, said, like, I did the gap year thing before that was a thing. I was, I was, <laughs> I just called it. I needed a break. Like we didn't call it well, fuck a gap year. We didn't do that then. It's like, yeah. You didn't I, have uh, the buzzwords back then. We didn't yeah, have buzzwords. I was burnt out. Didn't. I said, I need a, I'm, I'm over school. I need a break. Yeah. But I knew that I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing. So I was, um, at that time, yeah, I was looking for like employment, like around. And you were there. actively seeking employment. You were actively doing that. Six. I know that um I'm going I want to work yeah so I said mm-hmm. I want to at least have a job by the time school gets back I said like if I don't get one during the summer that's fine because we on summer vacation anyway technically yeah so as long as I have one by this and I think August I did that so I did have one before school like went back I think I that's started where your that mind time. should be at 18 mm-hmm. it shouldn't be on being hateful like what what would possess you to like the like, the fact that he went so I'm not saying it's okay like 
if he went to his own school. I'm not no way am I saying that that's okay. Like you know, like I, how, like, I Colin, have the timeline. If you want to go through it, like um, right, like how Columbine and stuff like that happened, like where shootings happened, where like students who were bullied and they came and they shot their own school. I'm not saying that that's okay by no means. I'm not saying that, but you know, you know they said this kid was bullied too, but like who gives a shit? I was bullied. I ain't shoot nobody up. I was kid. bullied too, <laughs> and I own guns and said I still haven't shot anybody up. Yeah, like I was. I bullied. was bullied. Guess what? Uh, the kids uh, who went to uh, like Ruby Ridges was bullied every day. She never. <laughs> the kids who like the the uh, what's the the Topeka kids, Topeka nine or whatever. Those kids, it's like they were bullied because they went into integration for a school and they never. Like, come on! It's like we can keep using that. Uh, and the wizard was bullied every day. Yeah. <laughs> we just we can't use that. We just can't. But um. The Chicago uh, you say time the time man, the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> you say you had the uh, timeline. I have of the how timeline of like, yeah. First of all, like I saw, I give a personal story about what I was doing. Ironically, um, I was at the gun range that day because, like I said, I'm working. I'm trying to get accurate, so I want to go like at least a couple times a week. Like, if, if with time permitting, at least once a week, I should. I want to get over right. there. Yeah, I said if I get over there twice a week, um, yeah. And just yeah, get your little target practice in. It's like I feel um I want to be as accurate as possible. Like I want to hit the bad guys. I don't want to hit any like straight people. Like if somebody comes in, I want to hit the bad guys. So yeah, I was at the range when it happened. And as I was finishing up, I was leaving out the guy working there. He was like, Yeah, you heard about the school shooting in Texas. The one it just happened today. Because like uh in the gun community, like they we already know what's happening, like when um when this go when this type of stuff goes down. You're going to get a lot of rhetoric, like, from your political rhetoric on both sides. So we already know, okay, like, yeah, all right, it's about to happen, so just get ready. It's like, that's what the guy was telling me at the gun range. He was like, yeah, just get ready, yeah, because they come in, yeah, so just be ready, because, like, we just had a shooting. You know they're going to politicize this, which they already have now. We're going to talk about that as well, too. It's like, it's like you don't politicize the bodies of 19 dead children. 19 now. children. Children and two innocent teachers. So that's where I was when I heard of it. Um, I was actually ironically at the gun range and the guy that was working at the range told me that, yeah, it was just a shooting a couple of hours ago. Yeah. He's like, yeah, so just be ready because you know what's coming. You know the bullshit is coming. Just be ready. That's what the guy told me. Okay. And I just picked up uh, my daughter and my son from school. I was just picking my kids up from school. So Mm-hmm. Like hearing that news is like you are you, you are, you are like, you coming from the from the perspective of a parent. I'm coming out the perspective of a gun owner. It's like yeah, so it's like yeah. ironic that that happened like during like when all of this went down. It's like yeah, yeah when we're down us doing normal routine, we would just do our normal routines. Yeah. Normal routine. I yeah. go and pick up my kids from school. I have to pick them up. Mm-hmm. Normal routine. Okay. I got the timeline, courtesy of the good brother Maj Ture of um, Black Guns Matter, like good, good dude right oh, there. Oh, okay. Black, um, nice. black, black gun. He he, but he's an advocate for black gun ownership. Nice. I am as well too. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah he's definitely. But he's out there doing the work. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's like yeah, how to um do it the right way. It's like yeah, like responsibly. Learn- that's that's the key word. Responsibly. Responsibly is the operative word. Accountability. Operative words. Thank you. 11.28 a.m. is when the um, shooter, um, he crashed his grandmother's truck into a ditch near the Rob Elementary School. Uh, he had just shot her in the face at her house, like, right before this. Because, like, people don't know that part. A lot of people for- forgot about it. Yeah, he shot yeah, his I heard that. Too. I was like, oh. He survived. She's in critical in condition. Face. So that could be another casualty. But, yeah, he's, um, she's, like, so far, I think she's critically, um, she's critical. But she's still alive, to the best of my knowledge, as we record this, yeah. He exited the vehicle, began firing at people at a funeral home across the street from Rob Elementary School. This is 1128. Watch this timeline because I'm going to get on my soapbox in a minute, too. Like, so watch this timeline. So 1130, a 911 call was placed by someone reporting shots. So we had a shots fire call 1130, like two minutes after he crashed the truck. So like, why? Look, pay attention to the timing. Yeah, you, you know where I'm going with this, probably. It's like, yeah. The 911 call was made within two minutes, so everything so far... I won't say so far so good. We still, we still have an active shooter. Like this could have been from prevented, is what I'm saying. Basically, yeah, this could have. But been- you have somebody who called and did the right thing. If you hear like none of that, oh, it ain't my business. If you hear bullets outside, you call, you pick up the fucking phone and you call. If you hear bullets outside, mm-hmm. 
So sometime between 11.33 and 11.40, um, the shooter entered the school um, via a back door that was propped open. For some reason, some asshole propped his back door open. Whoever that teacher or admin, whoever worked at that school, like, they definitely need to be fired, yeah. If they weren't one of the ones that got shot already, like, yeah, they definitely need to be fired, whoever left that door open and shit, yeah. We're we, we going to talk about all of this, yeah. I'm going to break this timeline down, then I'm going to get on my soapbox because all of this could have been prevented. So 1128 is when it started. He he entered the school at 33, like, either between 33 or 40, depending on, um like, nobody has the exact time he entered. Exact time, but approximately. Through an open it's door. It's like a seven minute window, which is still like a pretty tight window. That's a tight window. Seven minutes is very tight. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they say after the shooter entered by the police had arrived by around that time, like between this window and like um, the police officer entered the school as the same door as the gunman did. So the police were in the fucking school. That's it. Yeah. Before he even shot any of the kids, like they were there and shit. Yeah. And then, um. By the time, the, damn, when he started shooting, guess what these fucking cops did? They left. Took off running and shit, yeah. Protect and serve, bitch. But yeah, like, yeah obviously, that like, Uvalde police ain't shit. I, they, like, I don't know what, what's the size of this town. Like, I, It sounds like Mayberry to me and shit. That's what it's like, yeah. Because these police officers wasn't shit. It uh, looks like as a supernatural, yeah. like... Even though, like, I'm not a gun expert, I'm not what you would call it, but oh, we're gonna talk I, about that. We're gonna talk about people is, in your shoes. Your, your, your flight, you can have flight or fight. Like, you you can develop supernatural strength when you're a parent and you're you got that adrenaline. Like, you can you can develop superhuman anything when you have adrenaline pumping through your veins. You can. So then, um, by 1215. That's when you had like the, the SWAT gear and the border patrol. They all came like, yeah, like some tact and they tactical gear. But guess what? The local police, the Uvalde police said, stand down, stand down. Yeah, we're not going there yet. There's an active shooter. They, they, they told them to stand down. They said, yeah. <laughs> and during this Point time, like when the, when the SWAT guys came in and they were going, let's say like, I think 1240 is saying between 1240 and 1250. Now we I'm I'm come back to that. That's when yeah we are gonna come back to that. So like during this time, like when they were telling them to stand down, you had several parents <laughs> that tried to run into that fucking school. That's what I'm saying. I'm going like from your perspective that like fuck that. I'm getting my kid. It's like and guess what happened? <laughs> These police were like Asian. stopping them, handcuffing them. Yeah, handcuffing the, the parents trying to go into the building, detaining them and handcuffing them and shit. Like why was a fucking shooter like with an AR-15 inside shooting like school kids? It's like yeah. You like pulling you stopping parents from running in. Like, no, nah, I'm getting my kid. Fuck this. Like, if y'all ain't going in, I'm going in. That's what a lot of the parents were like. <laughs> we going in. So then it said between 1240 and 1250, like uh, the border patrol. An hour later. An it's, hour later. Like an hour after, like over an hour after. It's like the border patrol agent said, like, man, fuck that. It's like <laughs> they just like shoved the fucking Uvalde police out of it. They said, we going in. And one of them, it was the border patrol that actually kills the shooter. The border, it wasn't even the Uvalde police, it was the border patrol that said, fuck that, we going. It's like, they pushed him out, they get the fuck out of the way, we going in. It's like, hey, we done stood out here long enough, so they got the, they got them the fuck out of there, and that's who stopped them. Mm. Crazy. So, like, it was like an hour, like an hour between when the shooter entered the school and between, like, the border patrol guys got in and actually, like, stuff. And when, like, the, the local police had gotten in, like, minutes after the shooter had run in, so they, it might have not been any shooters if they had taken the guy out. And they could have taken him out that's right what, then. As there. a police officer, when you hear shots fired, um, like uh, you should be like as citizens, yeah, you're gonna duff a police. You're supposed to run towards that shit. It's like right. shots over there, like, yeah, like you have your shit ready. That's <laughs> fine. You duck and then you crawl, you, you but, do your yeah. thing where you element of surprise. So you don't you, leave you the like building, though. Yeah, you, you don't, don't leave. leave if I'm looking over here, I see the shoe is over there and their back is turned. I'm going to get down the ground, climb in there, get in. Oh, yeah, at least you got to listen to where they're coming from. Okay, they're coming yeah, from listen. that hallway. Let's, yeah, let's go down there. You're going to like, yeah, tip that way. Yeah. You don't leave it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't know anything about Uvalde. I never heard of it. I'm assuming there's some like little shitty, shitty small town that would uh, play with and with um Barney Fife, like I said, for my Andy shout out to Boomers, like Andy Griffin fans. It's like, probably like they police department ain't shit. That's what it sounds like to me. You guys just let this guy just 
And me, I think um, kill these kids and the teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like basically, you would kill the entire like nineteen kids. You killed an entire class because class. like most schools have like between twenty and thirty oh, kids. Most oh, schools, 20, let's say yeah, something like that. Twenty yeah. to thirty yeah. kids are in a class. So you basically killed an entire class of students and their teachers. Mm. Mm. So that situation, like I said, it could have been prevented. It's like had um, the Uvalde police done their job. And then when the um, Border Patrol guys showed up, let them in. It's like, y'all like some bitches. Y'all like, too scared. If y'all yeah. too scared, let us in. Mm -hmm. One shot. I can take him out with one shot. Like if you if that's what you do, you're a patrol person, you should be um. You should be a uh, dead shot from a uh, suicide squad. You should be like that. Like, okay, one shot. I can give him one shot. You should be that good. Where even if this guy is wielding this, got him and just snipe him out through oh. the head. Snipe him out. He's done. One shot through the head. That's all you had to do with him. One shot. And you could prevent him from killing these kids who are 10 years old, never get to grow up now. These kids just went to... um. It was like they just had like their assembly. They got their awards and stuff. Because, yeah, you know, they at the end of the year. Their awards, like they have that, yeah. They had just done that that same day, I want to say. Yeah, they had just done that. The teacher, they was like, she was one of like the favorite teachers there. She loved her job. She did her whole teaching career there. She loved her job. And, um, she loved her kids um, there. I, and the, even sadder with that is um, one of the teachers, her, her husband died of a heart attack. I say he died of a broken heart, like, right? That's what it did. was. I think it was a when I heart. saw that, I, I I was hoping that that was like I was like this I was like this can't be true. And then when I read, I saw the story. I was like, oh my god! And I saw the video of him, um, because you could see it in his face. It was like he went to the memorial because they had a cross with his wife's name on it, and you saw him walk up to the memorial. He put the flowers on. You saw him walking away. You could see him like trying to hold tears back. And they said he went home and had a heart attack and died. Yeah. After that, like literally like, right after he did that, he went home and died. That's the literal definition of dying of a broken, a broken heart. That's that's a tr that's true. You can die of a broken heart. That's very true. Yeah. And they have four children. Yeah, two of now, their children. Now orphans now is like, yeah. Two, two of them are adults and then the other two are still school age kids. I mean, they orphans. They don't got any parents. Now those younger kids. Huh? So it's like, but the positive thing I did see, um, because I saw uh, Sean King's page is that a GoFundMe was set for the family and they did raise over $2 million for that family, which I hope that everything goes and helps because those children, they are going to need that because with them having like, like I'm probably well, thinking that maybe like the two within days apart. Come on. And I'm probably senselessly because yeah. like it was a chain reaction. The mom died because of, an, of stupidity. The mom died because of stupidity. Yeah. Negligence. The mom died because of ne negligence and then the father died with a broken heart. So I'm thinking I'm like maybe the older siblings probably are going maybe have, have to, to take them. custody of their siblings. They probably have to take custody of their younger siblings, basically. And I'm hoping that that family does have some other like extended somebody who can like an auntie, an uncle, somebody who can like step in and really give them the support. Just all the families, period, like all the families that were affected, mm -hmm. period, by this unfortunate, senseless tragedy. And another story that another uh, part of that story that broke my heart too is one of the girls who actually survived the shooting when she I told her I heard she told she her story smeared she her friend's blood on her and played dead a ten year a ten year old child you you have a kid about that age I, I preface I, I preface this my child's only seven so my child's not that far from that the little girl was smart enough to think about okay it could be me so she rubbed. Her classmate who was dead already, she took their blood, rubbed it on her body, and laid and pretended to be dead so they wouldn't kill her. That's this 10-year-old baby had to do that. It could have been the 20 dead kids, like if she hadn't done that. Yeah. So she smeared the blood. Another uh another uh account the kids said that they did was um they went and they hid under something. It was like a sheet that was like covering. That was obstructing their view, and they laid under. They just like under a desk with a sheet covering, and they lay and they sat there very quiet, mm. and they just sat there quiet, just hiding under there because they couldn't see them under the sheet. So these babies having to go and to deal with that, like I can't even imagine psychologically what these children, the trauma that these kids are going to have forever. Like the kids who did survive, and the parents now, like the psychological trauma because. 
alive. Like they they told the parents like the especially some of those parents that they couldn't get in. They they they, they might um second guess themselves the rest of their lives. Like if I had got in, maybe I could have saved them. Like yeah, like the like that, mm-hmm. yeah, especially the ones that couldn't get in the building. Yeah, they told the parents um at the time of identification. They made parents just give DNA because they said that some of the kids were unrecognizable. Yeah. How bad it was. They were unrecognizable. So rather than take the parents in and show them that horrific sight, they just was like, let's give your DNA and we'll see like if we can match. But some of the parents are pushing back. And I agree with this because some of the parents are opting to have open caskets, they said. A to la, basically um, show a la maybe till Mobley. Uh-huh. All of that because they're trying to prove a point. And it, I, I think it's incredibly brave to do that. It is incredibly brave to do that, to show this is what happened to our kids. This is what happened. And it should not have happened. It just should not. Uh, Matthew McConaughey reached out because uh, that's his hometown. That's where he's from. He's from there. So, like, Matthew McConaughey has been on the scene and been there. Been on um, the ground there. Yeah, he has, because that's his hometown. So, I mean, maybe he can use his platform because he is a big celebrity. He's a big star. So maybe he can use his platform. That's what you do. If you if you do have that type of power, that platform, you need to use it. But um, I'm to the point now with this. Um, Now, let's get on the soap. Uh, yeah, then you've all... Yes. Uh, every police that was, every police officer that was on that scene um, not only needs to be fired, I think they... um. I, each one of me to have guy. I'm, I'm gonna to paraphrase Denzel um from trend I and we need to put cases on all you bitches. It's like every one of them needs to have a wrongful death um suitcase against them. Every one of them for not going. Every one of them and the police department itself. It's like the department itself and every individual cop that was at that school like needs wrongful death cases. I think the I think the hair from the snake. I and I agree with you. I'll piggyback with this. The hair from the snake needs to be cut off because apparently. If you're lieutenant, captain, whatever, if they ain't doing it, that means that the underlings ain't doing it either. So it's like everybody needs to be complete. Overhaul needs to be done. Retrain and properly train these officers. Properly train them on how to do in an emergency situation. Like if it's a real active shooting, you can't like, yeah, obviously in a book, a book makes stuff sound cool and calm. But in real life, you still have to be able to react. In real life, people ain't going to be like, yeah, what you, but people ain't going to talk and that's on a movie. That doesn't happen in real life. Like, it's like shooters usually last, what, 10 seconds? Yeah, Normal real, most gun fights are seconds. like, yeah, like very quick. About a 10 second fight. A gun fight is real quick, yeah. It's not like it's like, uh, where it's like just, like, it's not commando, basically. It's not, that's not what, that's not what real life is. It's not like that. Mm-hmm. You don't get that in real life. Mm-mm. Hold on. I'm just getting all more details as they become. But the soap, but the soapbox, yeah. And then use your platform. Like um, one of the realest responses I saw after this, Steve Kerr. Did you see his response? Everybody saw Steve Kerr's response. Yeah. Steve Kerr gave the best response because he said, I'm not answering questions about basketball. I'm just letting you know right now, I'm not talking about basketball. We got our same team. We good. I want to talk about this shooting that happened 400 miles from here. And then he even went further. And it's like, first uh, he was like, elderly black people getting killed in a grocery store a week ago. Then kids getting killed. Then uh, people so worshiping the church. church, church, church shooting that happened, yeah. Yeah, because Steve oh. Kerr went on all of that. When all the that all he the went in on all of it. The church shooting happened, I think, the same week as the Buffalo shooting. hmm Yeah. Steve Kerr went out, he did this. He took the mirror and he showed us in the mirror. He showed us what we're looking at. That's what he did. He held up a mirror. A lot of times we don't like to look in mirrors. We don't. We don't like to look at it because we don't like what we see. But sometimes you need that mirror held up to your face so you can see what's going on. You need you could try to be like, oh well, this is change needs to occur. So what are we gonna do? What what's the answer? And give real answers. Like, don't be like, well, ain't nothing going to change. No, 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 no. Like, no, you a negative, Nancy. Don't. So we just want to keep on doing the same system over and over and keep doing that and not change nothing. Mm. First and foremost, when elections happen, vote. Go out and fucking vote. That's the first thing. A primary election is about to come up in Illinois right now. 
Go out and vote, first of all. That's the first step. Vote. Get your elect, like get these correct elected officials. Stop just electing people because they're popular. They know slang. They're giving out goodies, whatever the case is. They've been in office for 30 years. Like, don't do that. Look and see what these people are actually doing. Learn your candidates and actually go out and vote. That's the first part. You go out, you vote for people, correct people. You can actually get stuff into legislation. You can make a change and get laws put on the books. You can do things like that, but you have to do. It's not going to happen overnight. It has to be a step. It has to go to B, to C, to D. To, you have to keep on going like that. Stuff doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. But you got to make the necessary steps. One of the dumbest responses I have to talk about <laughs> D.L. Hughley. That's why I call him oh, D.L. Hughley now because for the last year and a half, I've been saying a lot of dumbass shit. So dumbass Hughley is what I'm going to call this dude for a while. <laughs> he said, when they announced oh, that the 18 year old suitor was dead, I knew he wasn't a white dude. Really? The um, uh, New York City um, subway shooter was black. He was taken alive. The fucking dude that shot up the church, like um, I'm, I want to say um, he was Asian. I want to say let's look at. I don't have his race. Uh. He wasn't a white dude. The one who shot up the church, he was taken alive. <laughs> I want to say it was like I think, that was, a, I think that was Asian on Asian hate. I want to say that was uh, I want to say that was an Asian dude. They're yeah, the one who shot up the church. If you, if you surrender, you don't get shot. Yeah, if you like, out there trying to shoot it out, shooters. This fucking dude in um and Uvalde, yeah, he was shooting back at them. That's why they he shot was shooting him. back. Whereas um the Buffalo shooter, the New York subway shooter, and the church shooter, they surrendered. It's like that's why right. they were alive. They waved the white flag once they realized that they couldn't. They waved the white flag. The weapon and, and surrendered. Yeah. And mm -hmm. knew it was over. Because I mean, it is nice to see some. Because like I mean, like the yeah, and, um, I, most of them um, it'll be like eye for an eye, but yeah. I want to get the day in court. Like I want you to like I want you to feel pain and reaper. I want you to get all of that for what you did to this fa for what you did to these families, for how you affected all these families. You should get you should get the book thrown at you. You should. Mm -hmm. But you just can't like oh my god. It's not about a race thing. It's it's not. Well, fuckers want a race war so bad. <laughs> it's not about a race thing. I said the only it's thing I care about. To do with black people at all. It's like, yeah, it was um a Latino that shot a Latino. School. It was a Latino community. And the shooter was Latino. Like, what are we? Yeah, it was about? a Latino community affected by this. It was. But dumbass. It's like yeah. you just can't. Like the thing I just care about. Like I said, I go back to Steve Kerr. The thing I just care about. Like now, nineteen kids. Like I said, because like at that time, then we had fourteen deaths at the time. But because that was when it just happened, that was the same. When it just happened, but nineteen kids, mm -hmm. nineteen children, mm -hmm. nineteen parents have lost their kids. So now, what do we do going forward? Like since we that's all, the question. What do we do? We laid, we laid the um. We put the story out there. So now, with all the facts are out there, the facts as we know them. I'm sure it's more that we haven't talked about. The facts as we know them are out there. So um, what's next? Let's talk about it, kid. I think I buried those police officers enough. Yeah, like, um, and yeah, fuck them. Yeah, yeah, let's bury them some more. Like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, it shows you how, um, how society, how shit has changed in the last 20 years, whatever. Where, like, um, your, serv your, your civil servants are supposed to, like, you, they put their lives on the line first. It's like, yeah. It's okay. like as a cop, that's your job. It's like yeah, protect right. serve is in the fucking title. And shit. Right. Yeah. you're supposed to put your life. Yeah, let's go back like a little over 20 years ago to 9-11 when the New York firefighters Fire fire. in the twin towers to save lives. If that was now, you think those firefighters would run in or they stand there like nope, I'm not going in there. Shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the fact, job, that those are, the fact that like during that time, like when you saw like accounts like transcripts of what firefighters who survived. They was like, even though like, you know, they knew the towers were going to collapse, they still had to go in and just keep on rescuing people. Save as many people as you can, yeah. As possible. Like, going to get these tower people. had collapsed, like, they still, like, people, like, they were going into the second tower, like, trying to Running get in. Out, knowing that one of the towers said this one could collapse at any time. But Running down 100 flights of stairs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's all. Yeah, like I said, that like motherfuckers are bitch made now. <laughs> yeah. To paraphrase Macy Gray from um Training Day, I keep mentioning Training Day. Surprisingly, yeah. <laughs> punk ass, bitch ass, coward ass cops. That's what they were. <laughs> well, to paraphrase NWA, like fuck those police, <laughs> fuck them police. <laughs> the police, Uvalde yeah, police yeah. Like fuck the police with them. <laughs> I'm not saying all police, but fuck the Uvalde police definitely. How? Just how? And then. Like stuff when they're showing, well, this this is no, this is not the solution. Cause I saw something where they're like, they have the thing where they have bulletproof backpacks. It's like, no, bulletproof backpacks. Let's talk about yeah, let's so that we we buried the the bitch ass police. No, so like I saw an African backpack. That's where I want to go. Like, what's next? Yeah. So we just gonna put like bulletproof backpacks on our kid. That that's that solves the problem. No, that's not. No, I don't. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think you need bulletproof backpacks. But what's the solve? What's the well? Um, let's talk about it. Yeah, where do we go now? What's next? Like I said the first thing is let's look at laws and see what laws are on the books. Let's look at laws. Let's see what type of laws That's need to all be. My, the politicians are coming from now. You seeing a lot of um, more gun control, gun control, gun control. But let's enforce the fucking laws we already have. It's like y'all. Yeah, let's, so, so let's look at the laws really that we have. The laws that are already on the books and said, yeah. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you're not the enforcing laws. the laws that are already out there. Let's look at the laws and let's see what can be added, what needs to be, because something just may need to be tweaked. Something may need to be added a little bit. You know, you just have to look and see what it is. Um, I think, like I said, like, because people keep on resting into mental. Like, okay, if, if mental health and mental illness is a huge topic, which it is, let's actually do psych evaluation on people. If you want to own a gun, let's let's make sure that you're okay. Let's make sure that, let's make sure this is good. Because you just can't, like, if somebody, like, that's an option. Like, okay. that's an option. Let, let's, let's be real. Like, I drive, I drive on one of the busiest highways when I have to go to work. I do. Every day. Do people cut you off? Absolutely. Every day somebody cuts you off, but you can't pull out a gun and shoot somebody because they cut you off. So you can't a, do that. A viral video of an idiot that did that. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, he started firing like blindly into my car. At him, he just starts like, but pow, pow, pow. He was like, pow, pow. Like, he was like he, I think even having his eyes closed, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, he clearly wasn't aiming at nobody. He just started he wasn't he was just firing aimlessly because he was like this. Mind, his eyes were closed. He just like ah. he was like this. Just like he looked. He was like that's how he looked shooting. No type of aiming. No nothing. He was just he just pulls just out a gun aiming. and just starts firing and empties the gun and shit too. Empties the gun. <laughs> I don't think he even hit anything. Like that's the thing. Like, yeah. All in bullets is like you hit nothing and shit. Like what the fuck were you shooting that dude? It's like, come on. <laughs> Like, so um, obviously wrong? you can't what's wrong with motherfuckers, man. <laughs> what's wrong with motherfuckers? Obviously, you can't do that. You just people, can't. Like, people like him clearly shouldn't have had a gun. Right, you should have a gun. <laughs> so like, I said, so maybe we should do that. <laughs> Another thing that as a parent, and like you know, like we live in Chicago, whatever. I know like Chicago gets like their own reputation, whatever. But I mean, bullshit happens here, but it's not everywhere. Like well, it's not everywhere. We have, bullshit happens everywhere. Oh, no, no. We'll say it was some motherfucker shooting yesterday, but like they, this shit happens. It's like yeah. In in large cities, crime yeah. happens. And like here's the thing: crime happens in large cities. You got two, three million people in a small vicinity. You don't think two, three million people in one small area is never going to get into it? Violence happens in big cities. But with that being said, as somebody who lives in a large city, who has school age children, um, a thing that I saw that I'm like, it may not be such a bad idea, is if we employ um, veterans, employ a veteran in a, in these schools, it should be a veteran in every one of these schools that is there. Because it if you're a veteran- problems. You're would, trained um, in combat. You're trained in combat. combat. You know how to shoot. shoot. This. Yeah, and um, You're it trained. would uh, it would take because people talk about like the, the how our veterans are neglected. Homeless We're veterans. It's a lot of homeless veterans. About a lot. They ironically be talking right. about this. Yeah, it's um, mm-hmm. yeah, that would employ a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of these retired yeah veterans. Hey, I mean, if you can pull out 
how many trillion for a fucking stimulus? Can't we do that? Can we pull out another trillion and do that and put the? I'm just saying. I mean, well, I know a little bit or, of or finances, send, but I, I'm about to get controversial. But I don't give a fuck. You can send billions of dollars over to the fucking Ukraine and shit. You can ooh, take ooh, care of your own. <laughs> Mr. President, they got what pox? What what pox say they got money for wars but can't feed the poor? Uh, Ain't that what pox said? Uh, pox said that like thirty years ago. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> I'm stepping on toes. Oh, it's like <laughs> I I agree. Like, can we do that? Like, and if I like I said, I'm not I'm not I'm not um, a financial person like that all the way. But I bet if you run the numbers, you could employ a veteran every single school in the whole entire United States. You could employ somebody to be there. So in that and instance, the, 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 the stimulus proved that shit. Well, you can approve like trillions of dollars to like send out stimulus. Before out the sky. It's out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. You get 1200 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 That's well, what I happened. I hear nothing about it. It's no money. Like, where'd that money come from then? Yeah. Like, shit. <laughs> where'd that come from? Somebody shit. who had like eight kids. You got 1200 from all of for you and your wife and them eight kids. Yeah, y'all got some money. Y'all, y'all got <laughs> Yeah. Y'all got your money, but I want to go yeah. a whole nother. I want to go with like to continue on what you were saying is um we do we um Make we gotta um <laughs> we gotta protect our schools. Like why is it like um why are prisons more protected than schools? You never hear mass shootings in a prison and say, guess what? You're not yeah. gonna get in there, so you can't just walk into the prison with a fucking rifle and start shooting. Like you, I you'll understand. be taken out within ten seconds. It's like, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. just do that shit. They got snipers and everything there. You they got can't, snipers. Yeah, they got. They gonna they take got people you out everywhere. Yeah, you can't just walk in a prison and do that shit. So like schools. They said, dude, that was another thing I saw another post on Facebook in relation going with uh, what you said because they said armed security week, like that they and t- tactical like a train is like not, uh, not the Uvalde police. They clearly suck. It's like yeah, you need armed like with tactical training like yeah at, at every school and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody. And that's what they said. They said next time you go to your child's school, they said. Just go in and see how long you can walk around that school before someone stops you. Yeah, just, just, a, just a test. Just to test things out. Just just test it out. Just see. Mm. I know at my child's school, I can't like their school is locked. <laughs> and like at my kids' school, it's like you just can't go. It's like somebody's right there, that's like, another, hey, that's like the, lock the fucking doors. That's another my thing. kids' school is not like that. Who left you the just door? Can't walk at my kids' door. school. You can't. Left, yeah, you ain't Silk Sonic. Who left the fucking door open and shit? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know the asshole that left the door open at that school. That's it. There's no reason that a door should be you open. Like wires on and shit. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm sure if it's like okay, like because like it's Texas, so like you guys have sweltering heat, so I know that you guys air conditioning yeah, works. Around, like in some places, air. air Year-round air conditioning. I know. I know you guys have air because Texas is high as hell. Texas is very high. It's very hot in Texas. It is. So I know that you guys make sure that your air conditioning units are working properly mm-hmm. in these schools. So you can't even use like, well, I want to get fresh. You can't even use that as an excuse. You can't. So yeah, lock your doors. Like have um actual trained security and shit. Left. Have actual trained armed security. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go. Con- let's go even more controversial. Um, because as a school, as a, as a, yeah, you have school age kids. Um, how do you mm-hmm. feel about um teachers with their concealed carry license being allowed to carry? Let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? You know, schools are um gun free zones. Like even with the concealed carry license, right. I mean, there's gun in there. Yeah, but like if you um if you have a license in your train, like should you be able to carry as a teacher? I'm on the fence. Part of me says yes. Part of me says no, because the problem I see happening, especially if you're in a high school with some of these older kids, mm. 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 like with the like, younger, younger kids aren't as obviously as rambustive like that. But like if some of these older kids know and like if people know that, OK, you got a gun and then what if like one of your students tried to take the gun? Um. That's that's comes back to the teacher again because like the key word is concealed like yeah and right I'm saying but people you know find like, out is like yeah I get what you're saying yeah it's if, supposed to be concealed but we know that the gun words, might poke like, out sometimes you don't know yeah like gun might poke out or like somebody may hear like 
like if, you, if you're talking to another one of your staff member, you think that you're just dimming it over here and ears here and talking. Conversation, like, yeah, Overhearing I'm, your conversation because you know kids are nosy. <laughs> they are kids are nosy. I'm not being funny, but they are. But that's like that's why I say like I'm, I'm on the fence. Like I, I I can't say yes. I can't I say no. Said, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence about that. I guess I'm speaking from a teacher's perspective. I don't have kids, like so. Um, I think you should be able to, but I can see why you would say that you would feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm on the fence because uh, I'm I'm pro. Teacher. Like teachers should definitely be able to carry. But I, if a teacher did, then if somebody had to fool, then you can stop it. Especially like I said, especially if you're a good shot, then you can stop that. Yeah, you, you can easily take it by yourself. Go to the range regularly, yeah, and all of that, yeah, yeah, you, um, yeah properly trained, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm on the fence about the fence. Like I said, I won't say yes, I won't say that. I won't be like, no, they should absolutely not. Like, no, that's not, like, everything is in black and white. Some stuff is shades of gray. And that's definitely a shades of gray one for me. That's a gray. That's a gray that's for why me. Because that conversation, <laughs> back, like I said, this is sparking away all kinds of conversations up back mm -hmm. on the table now because of this. And I then we there's an election year, like you said, this is gonna definitely be a big talking point. Guns are gonna be all um, first thing guns are gonna be thing. guns are gonna be on the fucking ballot. That's where we at now. Yeah. First things first, like I said, go out and fucking vote. That's the first thing I say. You talk about ain't nothing going to change. If you never vote, you can't let the proper official in to change the laws. Shout, what shout are you out, doing? Shout out Tiffany Brooks for judge. Thank you. Tiffany Brooks for judge. <laughs> Punch 195. There you go, 195, baby. 195. <laughs> On 295 on that ballot, June 28th. But um, yeah, though, it's like you got to you got to go out and vote first and get these elected officials in. Because if you keep electing the same way, you you elect the clown, what do you expect? You're going to get a circus if you keep on electing clowns. You are. Actually. If you elect somebody who's, if you elect status quo, you're going to keep on getting status quo. You are. Like, like what do you, it should change. Cause you were letting the same people every like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Y'all stupid. <laughs> like, I mean, like, and, and this may be even more controversial. Where, like, I get how Trump got elected now. I do. I understand. I get how it happened because <laughs> he's like. We never saw a politician like that. Like, I get how he got elected. Most, I'm most not, of like, the side of that was fiction. It was, uh, you remember the movie Bullworth? Yes. He like, he was like Trump, like, like before Trump. Like, Bullworth was. Uh, or like going back a little bit, like um, why I'm in the movie Brewster's Millions, like why Monty Brewster was yeah, in the yeah, Brewster, Yeah, like is kind of another one like that. that. Brewster and um and Bullworth and, and both Bullworth of, both of them pretty much won in those movies too. They like, pretty much won, yeah, because they like, both came in. You come in, Brewster and got everybody vote none of the above, and then Bullworth actually won. It's <laughs> like this. He actually won. Yeah, yeah Brewster would have won if he didn't drop out. He would have won. That, yeah, so like, I mean that's that's what happens. Like you get you get somebody who's like, I'm not a politician, I'm different, this and this and that. People want to gravitate to something different. They like, saw it was a train uh, wreck, he, but <laughs> bro, he cursed and shit. He um he ate like KFC and shit. <laughs> he did shit you didn't yeah, see. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> he did shit like that. <laughs> he was a philanderer. <laughs> yeah. He had mistresses. Yeah, yeah, openly yeah, had yeah, mistresses. Yeah, yeah. So openly. I was Stormy Daniels and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He openly had mistresses. Openly. We know a lot of them had mistresses, but they hit him. <laughs> a lot of them did, but <laughs> JFK, yeah. <laughs> Clinton. Clinton, they definitely bound. Well, he didn't he didn't bang off. Um, he didn't have sexual relations with that woman. Let's remember. Yeah. He didn't bang her, but he got some um you dig. Yeah. He got he said what that mouth do and shit. That's he what got he got sloppy toppy. <laughs> that mouth do that's what he was like. That's what the kids are now sloppy toppy. <laughs> we said what that mouth do that's what we said. <laughs> but yeah, but that's what happened. I said I get how it happened. I get I can say it was a train wreck, but I get why people want to try something different. They're like, okay, we've been doing the same shit over and over. Let me try something different. Oh yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> so it's like people were willing to go oh, different. Boy. Let's go really different. <laughs> Is Kanye going to run again in 24? Oh, God. Please. Please go. Please yeah. go. <laughs> Vote yay. <laughs> 2024. <laughs> what if Kanye had got into the 2020 election earlier? Like, I would like to have seen, like, would he, how much he would have disrupted that. The reason he didn't make any noise because he got in too late. But if he had got in earlier... <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to go down there. <laughs> but let's, since we're talking about it, it's on the table as well, too, um... How do you feel about um 
banning the AR-15 because that's out there. Because um, remember Sandy Hook like was the first time. Well, I won't say the first time. The mm-hmm. last time this was really talked about because that was 2012, the last right? Shooting was 2012 with Sandy Hook. I think um over ago. over 20 students died at that. Like yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, and those who were like first graders, second grade. I'm um, like that. Yeah, so they so- were because like. And then me, I have a first grader who's going to second grade. So it's like, mm-hmm. like as a parent, you know, like I, I, I move a little bit differently because I am a parent of young children. So it's like my view is a little bit different from others. Um, I wonder, like, why does someone need to own, own an AR-15? Like, if you have a just reason why, then absolutely, like if, you, if you're like a person, because some people do actually hunt, if you're a hunter and, you know, but like me, like I'm not a hunter. I'm not like, do I need to own an AR-15? No, I'm not a hunter. I'll um, I'm not in a, I'll, I'm not in a war zone. I'll speak from the gun owner side. Like, um, if you were if you lived in Uvalde and shit with that police department, where you feel oh god, I would definitely own a fucking AR if I lived in that town. And then I'm thinking, and then, <laughs> and then I'm thinking because like we we live in Chicago, so it's like we have a different view. We live in Chicago. We're not rural. We're not, you know, you see what I mean? Like, like, yeah, so, you can't call the cops to come help. Somebody comes you on your own. It's like pretty much, pretty much like that's how I feel in general. Like, and I'm, that's I'm, like, I'm and my first, I'm my first line of defense. The police come to clean the fair. body up and shit. Like after I take care of it, that's all I look. I call the police like, hey, I just shot a motherfucker. Come get him and shit. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Like, yeah, but me, I'm taking care of the shit first. That's, and that's all. fair. I, and I feel that's fair. Like I said, so that's why I think you have to look at like, is it just reasons why? Like you need to delve into why someone needs to own an AR-15. And like, would, um, do you live in a rural community? Do you hunt? Do you this? Do you that? Do you? You have to dissect why you would need it. I was at the <laughs> matter of fact, I call you. I was I was at the gun store earlier today yeah, to pick up my new purchase. Yes, I bought me a new gun and shit. And while I was there, mm-hmm. I looked at an AR-15. So there we go. So so that shows you where my mind is. At. I looked at one while I was there. I said, let me check out that AR-15. Do you want to look like um? Like um, Isaac Hayes. <laughs> you never have enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Isaac Hayes. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you sure you got enough? <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> he's like, they did it for like, um, for laughs, but um, I get what he was saying. <laughs> like, he right, he was like, came out with guys like, he was like, he weapons up his ass and shit. He had, he had, he had grenades, had some 12 <laughs> like, shotguns and shit. Like, he, he had all of this. <laughs> he was looking like Punisher meets uh, Rambo meets Commando meets Predator. He was just like, Everything. <laughs> but getting back to the AR ban is like, would um, would an AR fifteen ban have, for, have um, would that have prevented this shooting if the guy entered with like two Glocks and shit? Let's say. The only thing that the thing that would really prevent the shoot is if like they wasn't so shitty and doing their job. <laughs> like that's all that's the bottom line. That's them, like I said, I want wrongful death cases on all you bitches and the police department. It wasn't so shitty. Yet. Like now that I know that timeline, it's like that's no unacceptable. Air, like, two, within two minutes of like the motherfucker entering, it's like so before he even like, fired you got there shots, on time. Before he even fired any shots, yeah. Before he even fired, right. we you, started you firing. What you was y'all ran do. and shit. Yeah, y'all ran. You got on the scene. You got on the scene at the beginning, which was great. So you're doing great. Like you y'all got there within the two, door three minutes. That he entered and shit, basically. <laughs> y'all entered the same door that the shooter did. And then you ran. And when y'all heard shots, y'all got the fuck out of there and shit. Yeah. Come on. What are we doing? <laughs> See you. Right. Well, we are we anything else we gotta add to that? I think is um we covered a lot on that. Anything else we got to covered add? a lot with that. And we cover both sides of it because like this is really a good topic because you being a gun owner, but me being a parent. It's like we both have we both have very valid views about it. and some of our stuff it intertwined, some of our stuff didn't. And like it was very fair. Like I said we had a fair discussion. This is this what is what uh, this is good. Like we can we should be able to have um this is a fair discussion. It's about politics now is like Everybody, everything is so polarized and nobody wants to have a discussion. We live in our little shitty internet, social media bubbles and shit that nobody wants to have a conversation with somebody. It's what, you, it's what, it's what you're doing. And all you, and all, and all you have, all you Damn. follow is people that agree with you. So yeah, you don't have like, you don't have any differing opinions. You don't shit. have any differing opinions. 
So then when somebody like um disagrees with you, it's like someone challenges you. How from. dare you challenge me? How dare you? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> you shouldn't challenge me. How dare you? Speaking That's what you I did. Had, um, I got into it with Jason Black of um from the black media. <laughs> hey, bro, Jason, I we didn't get into it, but we just had a disagreement. Because he tweeted out, oh, let's read the tweet. Yeah. I'm going to pull it out. Like, um, I got to go back. Because <laughs> the black media did um, come for me a little bit. <laughs> Which is, like, if y'all know anything about the black media, is really a thing. It's like, yeah, the original tweet that I put. Here's what his thing. He said, um, black people will be perfectly fine in the world without guns. We don't need them. Just ask any Karen in the United States Airlines employee that um, Brett, Brendan Langley laid down. We didn't even talk about. You saw that when like, the dude laid out the fucking guy there. Oh, yeah. He, in his face. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, he, he, <laughs> he said, the white supremacists on the hand need guns to maintain an unjust system. They're powerless without them. To which I jumped. I was like, Nah, I, I disagree. I said from the Black Panthers to Malcolm X to Harriet Tubman, black people throughout history they have all carry weapons to protect did. themselves. It's like, yeah, I said that. Yeah. Why not be, here's my thing, why not be able to do both? Be able to kick ass and protect yourself and if you want to carry. You see, you see be what able I want to do that. both. I'm, 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 I'm in the commercial. Show. Yeah. Why I'm not both? And I own a gun. I own guns. Guns, floor. yeah. I'm MMA why train. not both? Why not both? Because you should have hands because in case yeah, you get caught without your shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you should have hands. So then he said you totally missed the point. Go reread for comprehension. And then um basically the clowns like yeah jumped in and were coming at me. Yeah, and we gotta stop doing that too. Everything isn't a comprehension thing. Like like people not only that, like, but um like I hate like you're not um, that smart. First just of because all, you're a fan are, of Jason Black don't mean you gotta um you don't have to worship the man. It's like, yeah, like it's a, right, basically all his fucking right. came after me. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> and then everybody wants to be like they're so like like you didn't like you're not that smart. So everybody wants to try and be like yes I'm like no like have a seat humble yourself. <laughs> like Black I see these boy. I see these grammatical errors and run on senses humble yourself. <laughs> Oh, well, I get right what now. you were saying. I was just saying my part too. Like, yeah, like y'all yeah. miss me with that bullshit about black people don't need guns. I get what he was saying. Is like, um, yeah, because we're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster than white people. I get what he was saying, but still, low a white man with a gun to beat a black man without one anytime. <laughs> so exactly. I'm carrying shit. Exactly. That. You can hit, miss me with that. Um, oh, well, we're so we're so. so oh, let's go back. So let's go back. Let's go yeah, back to the. Like, yeah, nah. Let's go back to our favorite person that everybody loves to talk about, which McCall. Like, yes, he was a uh, he was dumpy and he was out of shape. But guess what? He killed three people. Kyle Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse, yeah, because he had an AR-15. Exactly. He yeah. was he was dumpy and out of shape. I know I keep on saying he was dumpy, but he was. He was like kind of out. He was pudgy. Yeah, he, he was, was like yeah, kind of yeah, pudgy. Yeah. You could tell he got picked last for dodgeball. You could tell he was that kid, but most athletic. He shot three people. Oh, but yeah, he killed three people. Motherfuckers and, and shot another one when they pulled a gun. Oh, killed two people. Uh, injured killed one. Two, yeah, shot a third one that pulled a gun on them. Yeah, so. blew off his arm. Yeah. yeah. So there we go with that. But oh. Um, I just had to address that is like, um, and I got no beef with Jason Black, the Black Authority, the Black Media, but yeah. I just found that kind of amusing that I said, okay, you got you got a following, so they're gonna come after me because I disagreed with you. Like I said, different opinion. How dare you disagree? How dare you have an opinion? Because you're a fan of his content, you don't have what? to worship the man. That's all I'm saying. It's like because <laughs> I like this his content. I've, I've um I watch his stuff, but um, yeah, I, I just this I think where we we're at, unfortunately, everybody loves to worship their whoever they follow. And at the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all heavily flawed. None of us is perfect. Mm -hmm. None of us is. But the the best advice I can give that I always say is try to be a better person uh, tomorrow than you were today. Just keep on trying to become a better person each day. Try to be better every single day. And on that note, I think we should wrap up. We got a whole hour out of it. Yay. And that's a great way to end. Try to be better. Make Mm -hmm. smart choices. If you if you if you can let if you can walk away from something, walk away from it. Everything doesn't have to be oh no. Cooler heads will prevail. Cooler heads will prevail. And if you want to support us further, we appreciate each and every one of you, by the way, as always. If you want to support the podcast further, you know what to do. Give us a like.
There we go. <laughs> also, subscribe, <laughs> share, rate, review on all your platforms. We're talking about Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, SoundCloud, iHeart, TLC Talk Radio. What up, Tasha? Also on YouTube and your Amazon Alexa devices. Follow me at Ozman the Wizard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Oz Radio on Snapchat and Facebook. You know what to do. And you can check me at MSIMA8626 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Mm-hmm. Also, F-E-R-A-G-U-L-L-E-Y-1 on Twitter. Mm-hmm. S-E-R-A-G-U-L-L-E-Y-7 on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Also, please like the Straight Gully Facebook fan page. Check out straightgully.com for your blogs and your vlogs. And for your video production needs, check out straightgullyproductions.com. Happy five-year anniversary for the podcast. I'm Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. We'll talk to you later. I'm gone.